This video is all about the Power Mister 3000 watt 24 volt solar inverter charger. I'm gonna show you how to wire it and talk more about the unit in detail. And it's also important to point out that this is an all-in-one solar inverter charger, meaning that we can uh, charge a battery like this from PV panels or from an AC connection, and we can send the inverter, the power from this battery, we can send it out to different appliances. Uh, we have a total of 3000 watts that we can use, but we must use a 24 volt battery system. This can uh, charge your battery at a max of 80 amps, so it can charge it extremely fast. So it's really built more for a bigger battery bank, I would uh, suppose. From the AC side, that can charge your batteries at 40 amps. So we could charge this 200 amp hour, 24 volt battery up pretty quickly. Now let's talk about the configuration that I have here. We have the battery, the inverter, and a load center, and the actual AC receptacle that we'll be powering appliances with. And our load center is basically just the AC out of our solar inverter charger that this line comes over, goes into the load center, and it has one breaker, which that breaker is connected down to the AC outlet. Now we need to talk about the AC in, and that's that yellow line. And all I've done is made me a 20 amp plug that's gonna plug into a 20 amp receptacle uh, in my electrical system. Now I'm gonna take the covers off of this, the load center and the receptacle and explain exactly why I wired it the way that I did. For the battery connection, we have the positive on the left and the negative on the right. For our AC out, we have the neutral on the right and the line on the left. And for our AC in, we have the neutral on the right, the line in the middle, and the ground on the left. And the ground that we have on the AC in is actually gonna be connected to our shop here, which is connected to my house. And the house has a main service panel, which has a ground neutral bond. And I'm gonna explain why that's important uh, in an electrical system, but I wanna make sure to point out, this doesn't have a ground at this connection. To ground this unit would be here at the bottom. And because I did not wanna create an additional ground neutral bond in this box, I had to add an additional grounding lug over on the side here. So essentially what I've done was disconnect the neutral and the ground bond. This would have been bonded right here had I put the ground or added a ground in here, then our ground and our neutrals would have been all together. And that's something that I didn't want because I've already got one ground neutral bond and I needed to separate them. So that's gonna be a question and it's gonna be really, how are you going to wire your system? Well, if this is connected to an, another electrical system, you never wanna have more than one uh, neutral ground bond. So you have to disconnect like this. It's just like a sub panel. And this shop is on a sub panel because we had to disconnect that and I'm gonna disconnect this. But I did ground it to the casing. And if you were putting this in an RV, I'm pretty sure you would tie that ground to the actual chassis. And for the plug, I wired it just like I would any other plug in my shop here. On the metal casing, I put a screw in the back of it, a green grounding screw, attached my ground wire to that and then attached it to the plug itself and then put my neutral and my positive and we were good to go. Because we've only got one unit and it produces at 110 or 120 volts, we could only hook up one side of the bus bar. If we had an additional one, we could hook up the other side of the bus bar and create a 240 volt or a 220 volt uh, system because both of those bars would be energized but in this case, only this bar, this bar, and this bar is energized because it's connected here. If we were able to connect that lug to another one, then we would open up those other ones and we could use double pole breakers. In this instance, we can't do that, but this is all I need it for, is to kind of give you a simple idea of how to wire this. And what I've done with the neutral is put it over here. So this is our neutral bar and any neutrals that we have, we just connect right into those bars. This is our ground bar that I had to add separately. 
and you just use a grounding screw to go to the back of the box itself and the main ground went over to the actual inverter that grounds in here and then the ground that we have connected there is going down to the plug. The only difficulty that I had was trying to figure out the ground. That's why it's important to understand that because we're plugging it into an existing electrical system, we could not ground and bond at the same location. So I had to create a separate grounding uh, lug over here. Now, if this was going into an RV or something of that sort that didn't have in another electrical system or you're running it completely off grid, you could connect your ground and your neutral up here. That would be okay. But from my understanding, because I have one other location connected for a ground neutral bond, I cannot have another location in that electrical system anywhere so i had to close that out and not have that happen here you see the flashing light on the inverter right here and what that means is you don't have an ac connection because we don't have that plug plugged in if i plug this in you'll see that that light will stop flashing and i'm bringing this up because it's important once you get everything wired up that we don't have that going on once you get your plug in this is a temporary setup this is nothing permanent this is just so i could test out the inverter I have a 12 gauge wire coming in. They recommend at least a 10 gauge wire on your in and your out on your AC, a two gauge wire going to your battery and 12 gauge wires going to your PV. And I don't have the PV wires coming in on this because my solar array is up on the roof and trying to get a wire from that down to here would be almost impossible because I'm using micro inverters and it would shut down the system. So I would just leave this to the imagination of saying that there is a PV system hooked up. There's two wires that come in, a red and a black, and they should be 12 gauge wires and they'll slide right up in here and you'll make your connection. While I'm on the subject of the PV connection point, let's talk about how many solar panels we could put together in our array to feed the actual inverter itself. You could have a max power of 4,000 watts and an open voltage of 450 watts. Now the MPPT input voltage range is between 120 and 400. So when designing your solar array, just be sure to keep that in mind. And something that needs attention by Power Mister and maybe even other inverter companies are these little plastic bushings that they're putting in the bottom. These are all fine and dandy until you want to secure the wire that's coming in so you couldn't pull it and pull it out of there. This does no good. So I wanted to remove these and add in something that would secure it. First, I attempted to use something like this, which is a standard connection point that would secure it. I did use this in the actual load center, but this would not fit in the little knockout. Very close. I'm talking very close, but the threads just would not go through. The actual point right here, that would go through. Then I decided I was gonna go to the hardware store and get these little quick connects like this. Well, that didn't work either because right here at this edge, it's just too thick, it's too wide this way to actually push through. Then I decided, okay, I'm gonna get this style to go in there, which does work. You see that I have it installed there, but you have to take it completely apart, put one side in, one side in, then put the screws back in and you can get it to work. However, you can't turn them in the same direction. So we don't have a lot of room to work here, but you do have a solution by buying this type of connection. Depending on your situation, you'll wanna know the measurements because sometimes the measurements that you get from the manufacturer may only include the case itself and not the mounting bracket. I wanna give a couple different measurements so you have a better idea of the actual size of this, if it'll fit in your space or not. So the height of this, is right at 14 and an eighth. The width is exactly 11 inches and the depth is exactly four inches. And if you wanna include the mounting bracket, you need to add an additional three quarters of an inch. And this is pretty lightweight, weighing in at only 17.6 pounds. And don't forget when you're doing your install to allow roughly 20 inches at the top and 20 inches at the bottom and eight inches on this side and eight inches on that side. That's the recommendations that the manufacturer provides to us in the manual. There's a Wi-Fi module available that you can connect to this inverter and that gives you the ability to control and monitor this from an app. 
And if you're interested, I'm gonna have a picture of the install instructions and a link to the PDF file for the product manual over on my website at DIYSolarBills.com. I'll put this in my latest blog post so you can go check them out if you would like to. Let's take a closer look at the display when we only have the battery hooked up. And the reason I wanna show you this up close before we hook it up to an AC connection is because we have that yellow light that's still flashing and all this section here is not active. All this is gonna turn on in just a second and this is gonna stop flashing. And now I'm gonna plug this into a 20 amp wall outlet and we're gonna see what happens to our display. So now you notice that we have this active over here. We have a green light flashing because we're charging the battery and our orange light is now solid. See that the fans have kicked on because it's charging. And here's always a fun test to do. When I'm talking, you see that the DB is around, I don't know, 70, 75. And then when I stop talking, it's down around 47. All right, so let's take this up here about one foot away. And we're getting anywhere from 52 to 56. I'm gonna step out about five or six feet. And I know it's hard to determine how loud or how quiet something is by just looking at a number or trying to hear it through a microphone. There's always something being lost in that. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to a chart showing you the different on the scale of the DB of where this actually falls into on like a whisper or silence or someone yelling. So it'll be somewhere in between that and you can get a good idea of where that's at. But where I'm talking right now, you're looking at 73 and it was running at about six foot away in the 40s and right up here close, it was in the 50s, uh, mid 50s. Let's plug some appliances in and actually use some off that battery and kind of look what's happened on a display because we can use up to 3000 watts, but I'm just gonna use this heat gun simply because I can change the wattage from anywhere from like 100 watts all the way up to 1700 watts almost on this one. So it gives me a good way of controlling what we're using. If you notice right here, we have a bypass. This can actually bypass the battery and run that appliance when the battery is not fully charged. So what I wanna do is disconnect the AC and have that pull directly from the battery. And when I did that, we didn't even recognize it in our electrical appliance. It just basically switched immediately straight to the battery, kept this running. There was no interruption whatsoever. Now what I wanna do is go over there and check and see how many watts we're using. And to find that, we gotta come down to right here, the output. And we're pulling from the battery at 1.14 to 1.16. So that's 1140 to 1160 watts that the heat gun's actually consuming. And I'm gonna leave this running for a bit to drain that battery some, and then we'll come back and charge it. And I wanna show you that side of things because this can get up to, from the AC charger, it can go up to 40 amps. If we had a PV connection, we can get up to 80 amps to charge the battery. So that would make charging that battery really fast. And for shits and giggles, I'm adding a 30 inch shop fan that should pull around 360 watts to help this process along a little faster. Now that we drained the battery just a tad, I'm gonna plug the AC power back in. Now that we have the AC plugged back in, it's gonna start charging the battery. Let's see if we can find that. I think here it is. It should go up to 40 amps and the fan's gonna kick on. 40 amps, this could charge a single battery pretty fast. Now it just depends on the capacity of your battery or how long that would actually take, but at 40 amps, it'll charge it a lot faster than my old charger. Anytime that I have the AC in connected, it is powering the plug and charging the battery. Now these settings can be changed if we go into set and you go through all of these different settings, you can change it to whatever you would like, but that's very dependent on the type of system that you've designed. And you should look at the user manual and find out what are the best settings for your system. 
And I know I wasn't able to answer every question or provide all the details on this inverter. And I'll continue that discussion over on my website, DIYSolarBuilds.com. It's a place where you can go and ask me questions directly, ask others directly, and anyone can respond to those questions and so you can get the answers to what you're looking for, anything related to solar. And hopefully I'll see you over there on the forums. I appreciate you hanging out with me to the end of the video. If you found anything helpful today, be sure to smash the thumbs up button and let me know that I did a good job. I appreciate it and I'll catch you in my next video.